Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing how to back up your Mach 3 settings, or for that matter, virtually any settings pending they'll fit for free. Now, this is something that I deal with on a regular basis. I have potential clients contacting me all the time about, hey man, my computer just died and I've lost basically all my settings. My vendor's out of business. I hear that all too frequently. Or better yet, my vendor's still in business, but they're on a later revision and they won't help me with the settings. I hear that a lot too, which is really disturbing. Um, but in this video, we're going to cover it real brief and real quick because I've already covered in previous videos how to come up to the operator tab. Many of you already realize that there's restore settings. You can come in here and you can see that Mach 3 creates the backup file. Well, we all know that already, but let's do a method that's super simple to do. And I highly recommend setting this up the second you get on your computer. So today, if you don't have a backup and you watch this video, hopefully you'll do this immediately. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to come over here, and guys, just so you know, I had to upgrade my computer personally. I'm running a new system. It's an Alienware system, and I am running, once again, Windows 11. So what you're seeing here is a Windows 11 display, and this is a question that comes up as well. You can run Mach 3 on Windows 11, and it is 64-bit and runs great. You cannot run it with an LPT port. You have to use Ethernet or USB. works great. Here is the Mach 3 folder. And we're going to come in here, and you see this XML backups. Well, we know, or we should know, this is where Mach 3 backs up all of those settings files. So how do we take this and save this file forever on a cloud, so to speak, and in a way that doesn't cost you any money? Well, many of you already have Gmail accounts or Yahoo or whatever email server you work with. All we have to do is right-click on this folder, and you can see these these uh, menus look a little different because I am using Windows 11. I'm going to click on Show More Options. And then I'm going to come over here. We're going to send to Compressed Zip Folder. And you can see it's asking me to rename the folder. I'm not going to do that. Just hit Enter. And as we hit Enter, you can see we've got a zipper here on this folder. So let's just double-click this. And you can see inside is XML Backups. And there they are. Everything is right there. Here is the original folder. Here is the new folder. Now, all we would have to do is come into our email. I just chose to use my own Gmail account because, again, it just makes sense. And then I would come over here, and I would just naturally come back over to the file, double-click on it, and you can see the whole file is only 441 kilobytes, which is nothing, guys. Everybody should be able to store this on their Gmail server or email server for that matter of whichever brand you're using or whatever genre you're staying with. The, the fact is, there's no reason for you to lose your settings when you can do this instantly. And best of all, when you send it to yourself, you can then come over here and you can see you can rename all of your folders. You can come over here and basically adjust anything that you want. If I wanted to add another folder, uh, you can definitely do that categories. And then you can come over here and mat create a new label and add a folder for it. So there's really no reason not to do it. It's just a question of when do you want to do it and if you're thinking about it. I hear that all too often. So again, this video, I feel, will save you easily hours of going back and trying to recoup the settings, if not contacting a vendor, on top of a lot of money. So I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope it's made you think. And once again, you can certainly do this with other files pending, of course, that they fit as far as how much space you have with your Gmail account. Now, and you can see, I've got 13.72 gigs of 15 gigs used. But that's still a lot of space for general email principle. I mean, if you're just doing, you know, back and forth with files and whatnot, that's massive to back up virtually anything. So just think about that. And the beauty of this is if I have to actually install anything on a new computer, all those files are saved. They're saved remotely in the cloud, so to speak, so that you have all of your files in the event something catastrophic happens. So again, I want to thank you all for your support. I hope this video has helped you. If it has, don't forget to support me and give me a like. It really does help the channel. Thank you. Take care.